Looking for a newer used vehicle? Browse online at tradeandpaper.com, Cincinnati's free online classifieds. Search inventories from local automobile dealers, list your own vehicles and unwanted items for free, and turn them into cash. Go to tradeandpaper.com. This is a special podcast presentation from 700WLW.com. This is Mark Amazon On Demand. Mark Amazon, 700 WLW, 906 on a Thursday where the Cincinnati Reds will return to action in less than 24 hours. And they will take on the hated St. Louis Cardinals. But tonight, 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 we've got news to get to. And the Louis Free Report was released earlier today, exactly 12 hours ago. And what was found is what I've been saying since last October. And many have disagreed with me and argued with me in the strongest terms. But what I said many months ago has been borne out to be the truth. And that is that Joe Paterno was not a victim of Jerry Sandusky. Joe Paterno was not deceived. Joe Paterno did not have the wool pulled over his eyes. But Joe Paterno enabled, abetted, and allowed Jerry Jerry Sandusky to rape and molest and assault young boys for 14 more years. And it's damning evidence. And while Joe Paterno is no longer with us in body, uh, I believe his soul can never be rescued at this point. And we'll get into Joe Paterno and what was in the Louis Free Report. Uh, We'll take a lot of your phone calls on it. Uh, We've got a special national legal expert, Greg Gianforcaro, in the 11 o'clock hour. In the 10 o'clock hour, there's an assault on smokers public parks, public places. We all know that every place indoors, including restaurants and bars, are basically off limits throughout most of America, but now public parks and even college campuses. And we'll get into uh, the, the fairness of basically ostracizing smokers who are engaging in an act that's legal. And, and let's begin with this, because I find this to be absolutely amazing. Uh, there was an incident in Richmond, Kentucky last weekend uh, with a couple of women, and, and I want to get some details on it. And for that, we turn to uh, an expert from the Kentucky Equality Federation, Josh Cook. And uh, Josh, welcome to the Mark Amazon Show. How are you? I'm doing really well, Mark. Glad to be here. Well, Josh, tell us what happened last weekend down in Richmond, Kentucky, in the Commonwealth with Sherry Cheneau and her partner, Destiny Keith, at EC Million Memorial Park. Well, as best as we can make out, and most of the information that's available on this is coming out of the media, local media reports, apparently they were doing a photo shoot in a local park. Um, It's a very small park with some uh, rental gazebos. Uh, it's very nice, very well kept. It is actually gated at, at one entrance. Uh, they were apparently taking a, doing a photo shoot, which is fairly standard there, and the gatekeeper requested that they leave and said that if the photographer brought anybody, and I understand that the, the wording varies, but with something to the effect that if any people, quote-unquote, like this were brought back, that she would be removed from the park again and they were asked to leave. My understanding, Josh, is that Destiny Keith and her partner Sherry Cheneau are lesbians. They're expecting a baby boy in late September, September 29th, and they were engaging in maternity picture, a maternity picture shoot. Uh, There was a reputable photographer who owns a company called 13 Wishes Photography, and her husband escorts her on many of her assignments. She was there for this, and the gatekeeper objected to and ejected the women taking those pictures because they kissed. Now, do we have any evidence? Was this a deep, wet, passionate kiss that would help sell uh, good lesbian porn, or was this just a harmless quick peck? No, there's, um, there's been a growing trend, especially in photography, of taking uh, staged pictures, uh, maternity pictures, engagement pictures. Uh, traditionally, it's been marriage pictures, but the, the trend's been expanding, and it usually involves a quick peck. And my understanding is that's exactly what this was. It was a staged kiss. The photographer that was there and her husband are both on record as saying that they were absolutely shocked 
at the reaction of the gatekeeper, uh, including the gatekeeper's quote, which was, if you come back and bring, quote, those kind of people, you'll be removed from the park. And uh, I'm told that the kiss was so quick in nature that the photographer couldn't even capture it. That's my understanding as well. All right, so if the photographer can't even capture a kiss, if it's that quick, that quick of a kiss, how could it possibly be viewed as objectionable or sexual in nature? I think the answer to that, Josh Cook, is that it can't be. So the clear issue here is that a gatekeeper at a park objected to homosexuality and decided to take matters into his own hand. That is what it sounds like. My understanding is that the park, which has, I believe the park is actually on private land and is open to the public, it's kind of a strange public-private partnership. I understand that the uh, the folks that own it and administer it are running an investigation into, into it right now. But they understand that they were shocked as well that this took place. Well, they're not talking about it, and probably with good reason until they have all the facts. EC Million Park is, as you alluded to, made up of two sections. One section is privately owned. Uh, the maintenance is funded by a private endowment. And you get in there from uh, Tate's Creek Avenue. The other section is owned by the city. They've got playground equipment. It's got multiple entrances. The question is, this this incident, this alleged kiss heard around Kentucky, happened in the private part of the park. Had it happened in the public portion of the park, does the same gatekeeper control both sections, and would the result have been the same? To be honest with you, the only entrance that I'm familiar with is the gated entrance. Um, the, where it's located is kind of an obscure corner of Richmond. So the, the most obvious entrance to most people driving by is going to be that gated entrance. I don't know if there is a back entrance. I would assume there might be because it, it backs right up to a, to a housing uh, residential neighborhood. And I'm told, and again, I've never been to this particular park. I have been to Richmond, Kentucky, but Stratford Drive and Langford Court of the Streets, and I believe that through the neighborhood you can gain access, the general public can gain access. But I wonder if this happened in the public section of the park, would it be an issue? Is this an issue solely because it was in the private section of the park, or would the results have been the same? I think mainly the the surprise here and I'm going to go out on a limb and make clear our position. Uh, Kentucky Equality Federation is comprised of a, a wide array of political ideologies. Um, but we try to fight discrimination. My personal impression is that if it's private property, people do have rights. I'm a libertarian. I believe strongly in property rights. However, when you, have a, when you start entering into public-private partnerships, that's where the lines start getting blurred. And here we have a park that's that is both for public use and private property. It's why these partnerships are sometimes awkward. Um, My understanding is that it has a number of rules that are special to the privately owned side of it. However, it, it would be good to see some consistency. What about the laws in Kentucky? Because from what I've heard, uh, gays in Kentucky are not protected under civil rights laws the way they are in many other states of the Union. No, that was, that was a pretty big shock to me. I'm not originally from Kentucky. I'm actually from Pennsylvania. Um, coming down here, uh, Kentucky does have the advantage that they adopted civil rights legislation early on. However, some of that legislation is somewhat dated. It doesn't include uh, sexual orientation, sexual identity, that sort of thing. And, and hopefully over the next couple of years, we can build a case, put together a coalition, and get some, some of that legislation updated because it's fairly standard in most other parts of the country. Uh, Josh Cook, I like to think that right here in the Buckeye state of Ohio, this wouldn't have been an issue. Uh, Kentucky may be a little different animal, but I have to wonder about the Richmond City Commissioners because I've been told that they've been briefed on issues like this. Uh, this This is a city where gays and lesbians can be booted from public places. They can be forced out of jobs. They can be denied housing because of their sexual orientation. Uh, which heterosexuals like me cannot be. So what about the Richmond City Commissioners? Are they maybe just kind of turning a deaf ear to this? Well, uh, here's the problem, and this is the big problem. There are a number of organizations who are very well healed. Uh, They have a lot of funding, and they have a vested interest in going into local communities, uh, starting fights between local factions, and trying to get what they call fairness ordinances passed. My organization is not as well healed as these, None of us draws a salary. And we, we have seen these fairness ordinances. 
they get past, they tear a community apart. They get they get blood rising, people support it, people oppose it. And when they get past, then they don't get executed. So what we would like to see is instead of these local ordinances that have no teeth and barely any enforcement, we would simply like to see a statewide non-discrimination law passed or have the, the civil rights legislation updated. Because passing ordinances in cities looks good, it makes everybody feel good for about three months, and then they defund the, the enforcement arm. And you basically end up with a law in the book that nobody follows through on. Well, Josh Cook from from the Kentucky Equality Federation. I've heard rumblings and rumors uh, that earlier in the day these women were verbally assaulted, and somebody uh, yelled at them and called them "quote faggots," which is a despicable term. I- is there any linkage that this incident maybe happened at the park, or maybe the people that have been hurling these disgusting epithets were the ones that maybe perhaps got the gatekeeper to take action? Uh, it. Being that everything took place so quickly, I, I doubt it. I have made multiple attempts to contact the, the victims in the situation. i have led to believe that they have their own counsel, so I'll let them speak for themselves. However, I, I will say this, Richmond has been at the front lines of Richmond and Berea, which are very close to each other, have been at the front lines of a number of civil rights issues, equality issues in the recent past. So this is, again, bringing it to the, to the fore, but... That's not unusual. It would seem to me, and I support Destiny Keith and her partner Sherry Cheneau and uh, their rights and talking to legal representation, but based on the laws of Kentucky and the statutes in Richmond, it would appear that they may not have a leg to stand on, which frankly is kind of sad in 2012. It really is, and we're hoping to have that fixed here. Um, what we need to do as a as an equality movement is we need to move forward and seek legislation at the state level. Because honestly, what we've seen from local ordinances that have been passed, again, they're not they're not terribly effective. And maybe that has to do with the climate here. Maybe it has to do with the nature of the tight economy. Everybody's fighting for the same tax dollars. But what we need to do is we need to update the legislation in Frankfurt. And that's what we're going to be trying to do over the next two or three sessions. Well, you know, the the root of this argument, uh, Josh Cook, and I'll get people calling in, and look, they'll disagree with me. This is a very conservative radio station, and I'm conservative in a lot of ways, but this may not be one of them, and this may be one where I differ from a lot of folks, but I believe this is a, if you look at this as a rights issue and a civil rights issue, I didn't choose to be white. Many people didn't choose to be black. I didn't choose to be a man. Many people didn't choose to be a woman. Um, I didn't choose to be heterosexual. I I came out of my mother's womb and and had a healthy appetite for women. I love women, and and frankly, Josh, many women love me, and uh, from afar they gaze upon me. But I I didn't choose to love women, and I believe that Destiny Keith and Sherry Cheneau didn't choose to love women. I think you're born. You either like the opposite sex or the same sex, and if that's the case, and people will disagree. I mean, you hear these stories about counseling and and shock therapy where people can allegedly be turned from uh, homosexuality to heterosexuality. But I would like to see Josh Cook, and I don't know your leanings or persuasions, but I don't believe that there's any kind of therapy in the world that could turn me into a homosexual and make me love men, and I believe that with every fiber in my body. So how could you then turn homosexuals into heterosexuals? This, to me, is a civil rights issue because these women didn't choose to be lesbians. They were born lesbians. You know what? I'll tell you something funny. I was raised in a very conservative household, very Christian household. I was raised to think that gay people were all pedophiles. I mean, I was raised to absolutely hate gay folks. I personally am straight. Um, I got, it it was a real wake-up call to me when I started seeing the mistreatment that happens, the mistreatment that is sanctioned by the people who I used to identify with. I honestly didn't wake up till about six years ago. It was shocking to me see folks being traumatized, supposedly being cured, when the things that I I don't think anybody would choose to go through any of the stigmatization or the treatment, the abuse that happens on a daily basis around the country, there's no way in in the world that anybody would volunteer for that. Well, I mean, you know, I look at this through a a wide lens, and uh, the persecution of homosexuals, it comes down to this. This is a day where we're talking about Jerry Sandusky. And here's a man that raped 
uh, boys hundreds of times. It's been proven in a court of law. Grown men in a position of responsibility aided and abetted and let it happen, and yet there are some that let their blood get into a boil about two women exchanging an innocent kiss that I'm told lasted about a quarter of a second uh, for a maternity card. And I wonder where the priorities are out there, because Josh Cook, we live in a world where there's all sorts of hate and persecution, and there are truly evil men like Jerry Sandusky amongst us, and people like Joe Paterno, who were heroes, but actually were cowards, phonies, and pieces of garbage, and we've got to worry about two women exchanging a simple peck in a park. It, it's sad. It really does show the strange times in which we live. It's well, unfortunate. What, what happens from here with your organization? Are you going to continue to reach out to these women, or at this point do you just assume that they may pursue private representation and you just continue to try to make changes both in Richmond and the state of Kentucky? Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, we're currently booked. Um, <laughs> we, we've had a number of discrimination cases, a uh, number of assault cases. We actually are in the process of helping the, the federal prosecution prosecute the first hate crime under the new hate crime law. Um, it, it's unfortunately been a very busy year for us. Um, I anticipate reaching out to them one more time, but I, it looks like they've got things well on hand. And it looks like this will be resolved, hopefully, to their benefit. But right. going forward, going forward, I'm actually, and I'll take a moment here to give a shout out to a friend of mine, Joshua Ludwig. He's a huge fan of yours. Thank you. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the army, and so I'll be stepping away from this fight for a period of time with an upcoming deployment. But when I get back, I anticipate taking this fight to Frankfurt and hopefully getting our our Kentucky state legislation, civil rights legislation updated. Because it needs to be. It's out of date. Well, Josh Cook, I'll leave you with this. I'm the father of two children. I have an 8-year-old and a 3-year-old, so I spend a lot of my time in parks. I've been to parks all over the city. I've been to parks in Kentucky. I've been to parks in Indiana, uh, whether they're amusement parks or small little playgrounds. And some of the behavior you see is despicable. You'll see adults that are hurling around the F word uh, in the presence of kids. You'll see adults who are drunk. You'll see adult, adults who are uh, smoking cigarettes inches away from small children. You'll see all sorts of miscreant behavior. And, and for this to be kind of painted as illegal or improper, I think there's a wide berth between an innocent kiss and, and truly sexual conduct. And I wouldn't want to see truly sexual conduct in a park with my kids. But to me, this is not a story about about homosexuality or heterosexuality, it was an innocent kiss, and I find it hard to believe that that could be grounds for ejection in 2012. Well, if you look at all these things, like, I mean, I know you're talking about smoking later. The smoking bans are hitting us very hard and will be hitting us hard here in the near future. Um, if you look at how gay folks are treated, how we treat each other as human beings, I mean, there's, there's this lost sense of humanity. There's this lost sense of coexistence, peaceful coexistence. You know, if you're going to smoke, don't do it next to kids. You know, if two young ladies want to kiss for a photo shoot in a park, you need to intervene. No, you don't. Be nice. Have good manners. If it's not bothering you, if it's not breaking your stuff, if it's not hurting somebody, don't hurt somebody else. Don't. There's. We used to have this understanding. There used to be this common identity that, you know, we're all members of a community. If it's not interfering with me, I don't need to interfere with it. I don't need to infringe on your freedom. And I think we've really lost that. It, well, it's become a very narcissistic society. Josh Cook, I appreciate you coming on. I wish you safety and health in your deployment, and uh, we'll hopefully have you on again soon one day. All right. It was very nice to meet you, Mark. All right. Josh Cook from the Kentucky Equality Federation. Let me ask you this question. In all seriousness, 749-7000, 1-800-THE-BIG-1, pound 700 on at and I see things that bother me every single day. I mean, I, I work with a guy that, that has like 23-inch guns, and, and I swear I think sometimes he does bicep curls in his office and rubs baby oil on himself like he's Hulk Hogan. I find that kind of behavior to be offensive. But I see things every day that are truly uh, offensive, that would be against the, the morals, I think, of an average person. But in all sincerity, does it offend you if two women – lesbians exchange a kiss in a park because I've seen women who are not lesbians exchange a kiss kiss in a park women that may not have seen each other in a couple months and they may hug and a quick little kiss in the cheek and does a kiss 
a simple small kiss without tongue that was so quick that a photographer couldn't capture it in 2012. Is that truly offensive to you? 749-7000, 1-800-THE-BIG-1, pound 700 on AT&T. Jerry Sandusky was permitted to rape boys for 14 years. Two women kiss in a park, and they get ejected. Let's get into it. 749-7000, Mark Amazon, 700 WLW. Mark Amazon, 935, 15 or 20 years ago, and I walked through a park and seen two women making out. If they were hot, my initial reaction would have been, damn. And there weren't cell phones and cell phone cameras 15 years ago, so I would have just stood there and said, damn. And my jaw would have dropped. But now I think I'd walk on by, and if they were ugly, manly lesbians, I would have walked a little faster. But, but I can't imagine... Maybe 15 or 20 years ago, people would have been offended by it. Now, I think there are much, 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 much bigger fish to fry than a couple of lesbians with a harmless little peck on the lips. And they didn't choose to be lesbians any more than I chose to be straight. Let's go to the phone, 749-7000, 1-800-THE-BIG-1, pound 700 on AT&T. We begin with Glenn in Mason on the big one. Hello, Glenn. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Glenn, I'm doing well. How about you? Um, I'm confused about a couple of things. It's not directly on the, the, the question you asked, but let me just go ahead and take a shot at this here. Okay. My, my confusion is, is on two different things. One of them is, what is the concept of democracy? In other words, if a community or a town or a city or even a state, if they vote on something as crazy as it might be, doesn't that mean that you don't have to live there if you don't want it, but you do have to follow the laws of the land? You're absolutely right. Laws laws are laws. Now, in Kentucky right now, on election day, you can't buy a beer at a bar. That's right. called an outdated law. That's a blue law. That's a law that needs to come out of the books. Let me give you another example. In Ohio, they're trying to crack down on little drive through pony kegs. Uh, where you can buy beer driving through. That's utterly ridiculous. I can go into a UDF and buy a 12-pack, same thing, grab one and drink in the car, just like I could going through a pony keg. So that's right. a stupid law. So I'm not arguing about democracy. I'm arguing that this is a rule that's been on the books for a long time and, frankly, needs to be given some thought. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, even in regard to smoking, I don't care if people smoke. I would think that our country would be free enough to wear... Like in Kentucky, for example, where they grow a lot of tobacco, if they want to smoke their brains out, why would we care? Well, I mean, there's there's two things, and I think the issue has been segmented and the baby's being thrown out with the bathwater. I think a lot of people oppose, quite simply, to butts being thrown around, to littering. I think that's the big big judgment with some people, but uh, the whole issue of secondhand smoke, and look, Glenn, I know how I feel about it. I, I've had a cigarette or two in my lifetime, usually following two or three beers. I, I don't like smoking. I don't like being in indoor buildings where there's smoke, but you've got business owners that own bars, especially people that own bars where no food is served, Bars that are for 21 and up, no kids are allowed in at any point in the day, and that decision, frankly, should be left up to them. And if people don't want to smoke, and there's a big sign up front that says, we are a smoking establishment, and people are worried about secondhand smoke, they don't have to go in. Right. Well, we're back to the democracy thing again. And, and that's what I was going to suggest to you as far as Kentucky and their, uh, let's say, their outdated laws re- regarding homosexuals. If, if for whatever reason Kentucky's voting has said that we're totally opposed to this and we want to run them out of town, do they or do they not have the right to do that? Well, run them out of town? No. Stop them from kissing in a park? Yes. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, yeah. let, me, let me go into my second uh, confusion. Um, why is it that something that's a known theory and it's not a fact seems to be presented now as if it's a fact? What's that? A, se- a sexual orientation... You're, you're stating it is a genetic thing that you're born with. Yes. That's not a fact, sir. That's an opinion. No, it's a fact, and I'll tell you why. Glenn, Prove are you, it. Glenn, are you straight or gay? I'm straight. Okay, are you married? Yes. All right. I send you to intensive therapy for years and years and years. Can I make you have sex with another man? I don't know. Really? I honestly don't know, but my, my point is you can't prove to me. Well, then you're bisexual. That's okay. Other. I don't have a problem with you being bisexual. You're still you welcome on the show. You can't, 
You can't prove, though, that it's born as a genetic thing, and I can't prove that it's it's a learned behavior, but you know as well as I do, there's been numerous cases where people wrote, wrote books on the fact that they changed their sexual orientation. But the fact of the matter is, Glenn, for all the tea, listen, I appreciate your phone call. Here's the fact. You could give me all the tea in China, all the drugs, all the therapy, the thought of having sex with another man to me is repugnant. Okay? I mean, to me. Now, if somebody's gay and they do it, that's great. But the idea is repugnant to me. And I would imagine a, a homosexual man, the thought of having sex with a woman is equally repugnant. But you could give me therapy. Uh, you could give me electrotherapy. You could give me the, the, you know all these terms, shock therapy uh, or revitalization or rejuvenation. There's all these terms for it. And you can give me all this stuff. And you ain't going to make me sleep with a dude unless you put a gun to my head. And even then, I might let you pull the trigger because I'm just not wired that way. I love women. Women love me. Brian Gill, who's producing this show one night only, sees the way women in this building look at me with regularity and frequency. Uh, and, and that's just how it is. And you can't change me. So if you can't change me, how are you going to take somebody who's a homosexual and make them straight? If you're going to say that that works one way, shouldn't it work the other way? All right? All right, Latonia, Rick on the big one. Talk to me, Rick. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Rick. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I, I disagree what um, Gar said about uh, you were uh, not born that way and, uh, you know, if he goes to therapy, maybe. Um, I think it's a sickness. I really do. I think It's an illness. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, it can be cured. It can't be cured. I think it's a sickness. Uh, it's terminal. Any, any, any man that... Any man that, you know, takes a man, you know, for a woman, you know, for a, a, a woman for a man. A woman for a man, man. yeah. It's no sick, I think. I mean. Well, you if, know, if, if, you're, if, if, if it's a sickness, then it can be cured, right? No, I don't think so. I then why are they alive? Why aren't they dead? If it's a terminal illness, every gay would be dead. Well, you know, I, I, that's beyond my, you know. I, I can't answer that question, but all I know is, you know, I've seen gay men, I've seen gay women. Yes. And and I honestly believe and I think about what they do and, you know, what they could be doing and yeah. what they do. And I'm thinking, well, there has to be a sickness. That can't be. So you're disgusted by it. You're disgusted by a couple of lesbians. I'm not disgusted by lesbians. You like lesbians? I, I, I don't mind lesbians. You have any videos? No. Come on, Rick. Tell me the truth. I'm not, I don't have any videos. Nothing? Lesbians. Magazines? Uh, no, nothing, no. 20 Lesbi years of marriage. Lesbian trading cards? None at all. Lesbian bobbleheads? No, now you're trying to get off the hook. Uh, get me off the hook. Yes. But uh, no, I just uh, I don't I don't disagree with two women meeting one another and gently giving a kiss. You have a problem with that? I don't care about it at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the point. Neither do I. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Right. Um, so we agree. So Rixie, I mean, basically, we just wasted about two minutes that neither of us can ever get back, and we agreed from Jump Street. You don't have a problem with two lesbians giving a little peck in the lips. I don't have a problem with two lesbians getting a little peck in the lips. I like I like lesbians. I I tell you, my my sister uh, went to graduate school at Smith College, which is up in Massachusetts, and it's considered the gay and lesbian capital of the world. Smith College, the the city that it's in, is a haven for gays and lesbians. And I helped move her in many, many moons ago. And I saw a girl. I saw a girl. It's a true story. I'm not making this up. That said, "Welcome to Smith, where the women are manly," or something like, "Welcome to Smith, where basically where the women are men." And it, it was one of these shirts. It was a catchy slogan. And then I look at the girl, and she's about three bills, maybe three fifty. Nice droopy mustache. She looked like a fat Raleigh fingers, and uh, it wasn't real attractive. Wasn't real attractive. I thought it'd be the greatest thing in the world. Like I'd be climbing the stairs with a desk, and there'd be like Swedish women in bikinis making out. And it was nothing like that at Smith College. It was a big, big letdown. But his point was basically the same as mine. He's got no problem with it. He's got no issue at all. Right, let me uh, let me head out to uh, Ken 
on the big one. What's up, Ken? Hey, how you doing, Mark? Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Um, I, I feel the same way you do. I mean, I'm, I'm straight. I don't understand um, you know, homosexuality. I have two cousins that are hom- homosexuals, but they're great people. I have nothing against them. I think it's genetic because I simply cannot understand it. I don't think they're sick. They're decent people. They're fun to be around. And I don't think if I would live in Richmond, Kentucky, I would be embarrassed that this issue is even coming to the forefront. Right Ken, now. Let, let me ask you a question. If you lived in Nazi Germany, would you choose to be Jewish? Um, I don't know if you have a choice of being you or you're not. I Correct. would like to be Jewish and Nazi Germany. Correct. If you lived in the deep south in the 40s, would you have chosen to be African American? Exactly. No, I wouldn't. Correct. And would you, in today's society, make a conscious choice to be a homosexual if you were allowed that choice, knowing that you'd be shunned? If you lived in Richmond, Kentucky, and were born in Richmond, Kentucky, if you had that misfortune, would you choose to be a lesbian, knowing that you could lose your job for no reason, that you'd get kicked out of public places, that you could be denied housing? And I think the really simple answer to that, Ken, is who in their right mind would make that choice? I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. I was born Jewish. I'm proud to be Jewish. But if I lived in Nazi Germany, I sure as hell wouldn't have made that choice. If I lived in Montgomery, Alabama in 1950, I wouldn't have made the choice to be African American. And if I'm a gay man, Man today, that would not be by choice. That would be by birth. Exactly. And I, I just feel that, you know, we have to be, I, I, I'm open-minded about this. I mean, I don't want anybody forcing their views on me. And I have cousins, like I said, they're gay. They're great people. I'm not going to tell them, hey, you're wrong. Cause that's what's right for them. I do think it's genetic. I really do. I mean, they were gay from day one, and they've been, they're great people. I've worked with gays. And as long as no one pushes it on me, I'm fine with it. I'm not pushing, you know, my heterosexuality on anybody else. So I just think we, we should be open-minded enough, and there's enough serious issues out there without worrying about one girl giving another girl a peck. Should that really be an issue? I, I don't you. think it should be. Ken, thank you very much. And that opens up a phone line, 749-7000, the big one, pound 700 at and I don't ask questions. It's none of my business. I, I have suspicions that several that have produced this show are gay. And as long as they don't approach me and try to kiss me or, or touch me in any un, untoward manner, I don't have a problem with it. Um, and if a couple of gays want to kiss in a park, that's fine. I, I think I would take more umbrage at a guy and a girl just going at it, mowing each other, and I got to explain to my eight-year-old, my three-year-old, what a couple of young horn dogs are doing by the water slide. That would give me more pause than these two women with a simple peck on the on the lips, which nobody would even ask a question about, except for the gatekeeper at EC Million Memorial Park. Millions and millions more of your phone calls as we take you deep into the night. Mark Amazon seven hundred WLW. Mark Amazon 950 700 WLW. Here's my guess, and sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but people that I talk to by and large that are under the age of 45 or so really are pretty accepting of homosexuality. And I find that many that take umbrage with it, whether it's on this radio show, this station, or just walking about town, are by and large over the age of 55. And I think we see laws that are trying to be passed and uh, DOMA is trying to be shot down and gay marriage is is up. And you look at the poll numbers and they're climbing. And I believe that in about 15 years, as younger people become a voting age, I think there'll be more acceptance of homosexuality. And with all the problems in society, with a a budget that's in complete disarray, debt in the trillions, uh, two parties that can't get along, stalemates in Congress, I don't believe that we have one completely fit candidate for the highest office in this country. I think Republicans are dissatisfied with Mitt Romney. I think they view him as the lesser of two evils. And with all these problems, with people like Jerry Sandusky and our supposed heroes in society like Joe Paterno are nothing but scumbags and dogs. And we have all these things, and yet there are some out there that are still so offended by two women exchanging a simple kiss in a park. And it really makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Uh, Darren is in Walton on 700 WLW. Hello, Darren. Hey, how's it going, Mark? Darren, I'm doing well. Thank you. 
Hey, I heard you saying how, like, you know, people are under 40 are quite a bit accepting of it. Yes. And I'm 35, and the thing of it is, I love everybody the same. I'm not going to treat somebody differently. You know, I'm not going to try and point them out or anything like that. Right. But the sexual orientation of being homosexual is a direct 180 from what God says we are to live our life. So you're not going to single anybody out or, or cast stones, but these people are living their life uh, in complete disobedience of God, and, and therefore they're wrong and morally and ethically doomed. Well, I don't think they're morally doomed. I don't think anyone's morally doomed. Um, they always have the option to repent and accept Jesus to forgive them. Well, I ask you this. Um, let me ask this question, Darren. You're, you're, you said you're 35. Uh, I'm going to assume by the way you're talking that you're, you're a heterosexual. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Are you married? Do you have a girlfriend? I'm married. All right. So you're married. How long have you been married for? I've been married for four years. All right. So, so, so let, let's just say that, that someone comes up to you and says, uh, Darren, the rules in Walton have changed. The law of the land has changed. And right now being heterosexual is wrong. And we want you to repent and we want you to change. What would it take Darren to make you sleep with another man? What would it take? 20 well, bucks? I mean, 50 I mean, bucks? I know you're talking in hypothetical, but it's hard to wrap my head around something A PlayStation? Like that. But that's how it probably is now, for a couple of homosexuals. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is there going to be any games with the PlayStation? I had you at Madden 13, huh? Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. All right. But, but my point is, Darren, I mean, you, is there anything that could make you sleep with a man? Because I, I don't believe that I could be rewired or reprogrammed to do it. The thought of it uh, makes my stomach turn. I, I'm not attracted to men. I never have been. I like women. I like women a lot. I, I'm very faithful and loyal to the one I have, although I look at lots of others on a given day, especially at the gym when they're on treadmills and they may bounce in a certain direction. But, I mean, Darren, the point is, you, the, you, could you be changed? And if you can't be changed, then how are you going to change a homosexual? Well, I don't think that it's you can look at it in whole terms. Not everybody is going to be changed, and not every homosexual will be able to change their sexual orientation. But let's look at it this way. Somebody that's a pedophile, would you say that that's wrong? Absolutely. Okay. Well, would you say that they were born that way? Yeah. Okay. You yeah. think they're genetically predisposed to be a pedophile? I think you're born with, with a certain imbalance or something that makes you do that. Uh, okay, no, I, I got you. Hey, yeah. Stop right there. Stop right yeah. there. You were born with an imbalance, right? Correct. Correct. So is it okay for us to eventually just accept people that are pedophiles? Absolutely not. It's criminal behavior, and we've seen that with Jerry Sandusky, and the book is thrown at him. There are not laws against people being homosexual. There are certain places, like Richmond, Kentucky, where they can't express themselves. For a long time in the military, they couldn't express themselves. But but to equate two women or two men having consensual relations uh, with a pedophile who's abusing a kid, I mean, that's, the, that's like apples to grapefruits to water melons there. No, I understand what you're saying about the laws and how it actually hurts another person, but you know, if you look down the road for people that, that live in that way, they end up hurting themselves anyways. Well, but that, and that's so, the thing, but, that, no that, but you're making my case. You know, Darren, listen, I, I, I gotta run, Darren, I appreciate the phone call, but you're making my case, because you just said they end up hurting themselves anyway, and they do. I mean, I think if you're a homosexual, you got to work harder. You got to work harder in business. You got to work harder socially. You got the deck a little bit stacked against you. So if you've got to work harder, I mean, if you've got to work harder to get a job and you've got to work harder to, to get to a certain level in society, which I believe you do if you're gay, why would you choose it? Why would anybody choose to be a way that makes you have to work harder? The answer nobody would choose it because they're not making a choice. Steve and Garrett, Garrett. And Randy and Jimmy and uh, many others will continue with this topic. We'll get into Sandusky and smoking. Is it coming soon? No smoking in your own home. We'll get into it. Mark Amazon, 700 WLW.